Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials, I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about the retain all method in the ArrayList class. I'm going to open up my web browser on my website, javacjava.com, and select begin. I'm going to scroll all the way down here to the ArrayList retain all method. And basically, here's the declaration for it, right? You've got Boolean return type and then the method signature here, retain all, and then a single argument, right, of collection type, right? And I'll go over that here real quick there. So the retain all method retains all matching elements in the current ArrayList instance that match all elements from the derived collection list argument. The collection portion of the parameter list means that we can pass in any object that is a subclass or sub-interface of the collection interface. Now the collection interface lays the groundwork for the collection framework. The collection interface defines many essential abstract methods such as add, clear, and of course retain all. Now each and every subclass or sub-interface will inherit these methods and any concrete subclass must implement them. Alright, let's go over to the collection documentation here. So you can see here's interface collection, and it has all these sub-interfaces. Pay special attention to list and array list, okay? Um, so you can see here's the method summary here, abstract methods here. Basically, um, here's add, for example, here's clear, here's retain all, right? So these, all of these subclasses will implement every single one of these these um, methods here, or must implement them if they don't inherit them, right? Um, okay, so let's go ahead and pop back here real quick. <clears throat> so we know, we now know that a collection must contain a group of elements or objects, and hence why we can pass any object instance that is derived from the collection interface, right? Okay, now the, uh, basically got your chevrons with a question mark in there, portion of the parameter list is a generic wildcard of unknown type. I will be going over generic wildcards and wildcard bounding in future tutorials after I've completed my ArrayList series. For now, just be sure that the object types contained in the elements of the current instance of the ArrayList match the object types contained in the collection list argument. In other words, if you've got ArrayList of all strings, make sure that the collection, um, <coughs> Excuse me. The collection thing up here is all strings as well. The C portion of the parameter list merely represents a local copy of the reference variable. All right, um, let's go ahead and come down here and let's just simply highlight this code. Control C to copy or right click and select copy. I'm going to move my browser off screen here. I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one really fast by right clicking, selecting new shortcut, CMD, next, and finish. It's just that easy. Let's go ahead and open it up. First thing I want to do is type in Java C, which is the Java compiler. You should see all this stuff scroll by. If you don't, if you receive an error message, um, watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. I want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly uh, before continuing. I did CD space backslash. That moves us down to the root. I'm going to do CLS to clear the screen. I'm going to make a directory here called Java. I already have that folder, but if you don't, um, the MD command will go ahead and make that for you. you change directories to the Java folder. I'm going to make another directory here called uh, array list uh, retain all. Okay, and CD and hit tab, array, array list to change directories to the array list retain all folder. I'm going to do notepad array list retain all dot Java. Okay, control V to copy or right click and select copy or paste, sorry. Control V to paste. Um, so this is a fairly simple class. Um, importing java.util.star because we need that for the array list, the collections, and list, and a few, a few other things here too as well. Okay, so we got our main method entry point right here. And I'm just simply declaring a new array list um, every, of, of string type here states as the reference variable and then I'm using the collections class and invoking the add all method passing the states reference variable and then I'm loading it up with all these values here okay and then I'm just simply displaying it to the console there now the next thing I'm going to do is using 
I'm just going to simply select the collection and create a collection interface, um, basically array. And uh, retain these is going to be my reference variable. And I'm just going to set that to the arrays class as list and then Colorado and New York, right? And then we'll display retain these to the console. And then we will invoke the retain all method, <coughs> passing it the retain these collection list and basically display what states is after that. All right, so fairly simple here. Let's go ahead and uh, let's clear our screen. Java C to compile this. Java to run it. Okay, so the first thing we have up here is states. So we're displaying states to the console here. And that's exactly what we'd expect. And then retain these, right? We're displaying retain these to the console right there. And then after we invoke the retain all, we'll display states out here. So you can see uh, after we invoke the retain all passing retain these, which is the collection object, states now equals Colorado and New York. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's go ahead and come back over here to the collection framework here, right? So we can see that, for example, list is a sub interface of the collections interface. Okay, so let's pop back over here. And so actually let's pop back over here and let's uncomment this out. And basically we'll do a list interface type here, a string and retain these, same reference variable name, and then basically set that equal to arrays as list here, right? Let's go ahead and save this out here. Let's clear our screen. <clears throat> and let's go ahead and run it. And basically you can see we still have the same results. Come back to our collection framework here. And of course we know ArrayList is also an implementing class too as well. So we can do um, ArrayList. Instead of like, for example, setting it to arrays as list, I'm just going to go ahead and use the add method. So we'll create a new ArrayList retain these and just basically set it equal to an empty ArrayList there. And then we'll add uh, Colorado and New York by two, invoking the add method twice and passing it these string literals. Okay, recompile it, rerun it, and get the same results there. Okay, so basically the point I'm trying to drive home here is we is every single one of these implementing classes, which is part of the collection um, that implements the collection interface, which is kind of like the collection framework there. There's a couple, few more things to it than that, but um, this kind of gives you an idea. So we could come into something like, uh, for example, I don't even know what a concurrent skip list set is. But one thing we do know about concurrent skip list set is it will have an add method in there. It has to because it inherits it from the collection interface. So we can come over to like concurrent skip list and I'm just going to highlight it here. Control C to copy. And I can see it's part of the um, <coughs> java.util.concurrent package here. So let's just move this over here and what I'm going to do instead of array list, I'm just going to come in here and control V to paste that. And we're going to make a new concurrent skip list set, right? Whatever that is, not entirely sure, but it doesn't matter because we know it will have an add method. All right. And then let's come over here and let's import the proper package. <coughs> okay. So now we got a concurrent skip list set, retain these, new concurrent skip list set, basically empty, as long as we, and of course it'll only contain strings. So we can use the add method there and add those two entries there. And I'll tell you what, instead of Colorado, let's just uh, do Hawaii and Alabama. Hmm, I wonder what happens when we have Hawaii and Alabama out of different order. I don't know. I've never tried that. Let's see what happens there. All right, let's clear our screen. Java C to compile that. 
Java to run it. Okay, so we can see array list, or this particular one here, concurrent skip list set, retain these, Alabama, Hawaii, right? And then, of course, after we invoke the retain all on states there, it does, in fact, only keep Alabama and Hawaii. So that really what didn't matter on the order on that. I think it's interesting that whatever this concurrent skip list set is, it kind of ordered them in alphabetical order or something rather. But anyway, so beside the point, but just wanted to let you know on the kind of whole, spend a little bit more time explaining the collection interface there and how that works. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this. Get rid of that, and that's pretty much all I got. No real final thoughts today, and that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.